So, as you might have noticed, there are two toy lines that I really, really love. Number one, Lego. Number two, G.I. Joe. And so, you can imagine the excitement my brother and I had when we walked into a discount store and found the best of both worlds. Or maybe just the mediocre of both worlds. So Built to Rule was Hasbro's attempt at a building block toy line that could compete with Lego. You had G.I. Joe, some Transformers, and uh, even Tonka, Search and Rescue, kind of a Rescue Heroes type of thing. All built around the standard Lego brick style line, except with a BTR logo on them because, you know, Built to Rule. Okay, so the first thing you want to talk about when you're talking about the BTR bricks was the great clutch power on them. Um, they held together really well, at least for the solid blocks. Um, it's kind of when you get into the smaller, thinner blocks that there's just not, they just come apart way too easily. But overall, like a really solid try, much better than most brick construction that you normally see. The really cool thing about BTR is that you would get something you never got in Lego, and that's guns and weapons and whatnot. For example, uh, these really cool molded missile pieces that were used as accents on so many different sets. This engine cover piece right here was really great. And then uh, spring-loaded missiles. missiles um, and like this really cool Bionicle-esque launcher that came um, with the Raging Typhoon as well. So the figures are probably the most notable thing about these sets. Here is a 1986 uh, vintage beachhead figure to kind of take a look at, to kind of compare. G.I. Joe was going through a reinvention for the modern era as the G.I. Joe versus Cobra figures that came back. This is heavy duty from Wave 1. He doesn't have the O-ring, um, and I think there was quite a backlash against that. So almost immediately, they jumped to a, more of the original kind of construction, but still having that modern detailing. This is a shipwreck from Spy Troops from 2003, and uh, this is the same year that the Built to Rule Lego sets first came out. So uh, you have two kinds of figures that came out in this series. You have uh, this guy, Hollow Point, which is, I think, supposed to be rock and roll, was probably the intention for him. Um, of that character reinvention. And he's got an O-ring, but then you also have in the exact same wave, you have Frostbite, which was also a wave one figure, just like Heavy Duty, that still has the T-crotch construction. Uh, the really cool thing and obvious thing about these was that they had the pegs on the side. The only weapon that you can actually attach to them is going to be this gun, this gun right here which is, again, goes back to those cool molds I was talking about. But they really can't pose with them too well. They were just kind of an interesting... I don't know. So the figures left a little bit to be desired in this respect. You could put them on, uh, make them stand on blocks. So they were a little bit easier to stand, <laughs> which is a great example, as you've noticed by the three figures I've knocked over. Uh, maybe some place, a good idea for these. And also, the whole build-to-rule concept was not just vehicles. You could build bases. With that said, you're building bases for three and a quarter, uh, three-fourths inch figures. So, this is one of the larger pieces that you're going to find in the set. Um, so that you can fit the figures with these large-scale kind of vehicles that they were going for. For In fact, it was actually super helpful for this little segment. I actually used some BTR pieces to build a rig to set my phone on after I'm recording for them. It was just, uh, so yeah, it was kind of a weird transitional era for G.I. Joe. They're kind of trying anything and everything, which is exactly what LEGO was doing at that time as well. So you ended up with some figures that have really great sculpts, but um, they just look wonky alongside your regular Joes because of those pegs on their forearms. 
So on that note, let me introduce you to the Forest Fox. This is one of the first sets we got. Came with uh, the Frostbite figure. And kind of a really cool, solid, vamp, um, all-striker kind of vehicle. And it's really, 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 really solid. There's not any pieces that are going to fall off, other than maybe the guns if you hit them. Um, no steering wheel for Frostbite to drive the vehicle, so I'm just assuming he's doing it with his pedals. Uh, but, I mean, really cool printing, really cool sculpts. I mean, these are 20 years old. They've been in a box, all rattled together, mixed in with other G.I. Joe pieces. And there's hardly any scratching, any scaping on any of these. All printed pieces, no stickers to my knowledge. And so, you know, again, cool thing is, you can pair these alongside your regular G.I. Joe vehicles. Because, again, they go with your regular G.I. Joe figures. So we can get Duke put in here, and we can even put Shipwreck on the back manning the guns, even though there's really not a good place for him to stand. It's probably a good idea to put the BTR guys in the back. But it would just sit alongside any of your other G.I. Joe vehicles. And then when you're done, you can take the pieces off and attach them to your Lego sets. Now, for size comparison, let me show you. This is a one of my favorite sets, the 2008 four-wheeling pursuit, um, in the, which is kind of a similar type of vehicle. This is from Lego. Uh, would have retailed, I think, at $40 when it first came out. It also came with a helicopter as well. But just kind of give you an idea of scale. This vehicle, Lego vehicle, is massive in any Lego world. I mean, your general Lego vehicle is going to be something more along the side of this. This is an adventurous vehicle from the 90s. But, you know... Just kind of giving you a scale idea here of how big these G.I. Joe vehicles were. And then when you were done, you could just tear them apart, box them up. You didn't have to worry about storage. Um, they could go in a bin with your other Legos, and they're simple enough builds that you could just rebuild it whenever you needed it. Now, unfortunately, all the vehicles can't be winners. This was a deployable vehicle that came with the Armadillo also from 2003, and it's just this. It's not even an AVAC, it's not even a trouble bubble, it's just, it's just this. So as solid as this particular vehicle is, majority of them were not so solid. The Raging Typhoon and the Armadillo were larger vehicles that would almost fall apart immediately anytime you tried to open up the doors and such. So with that said, and with probably the lack of demand for G.I. Joe uh, figures, these ended up at discount stores pretty quickly back in the day. In fact, I remember seeing one as late as 2006 or 7. Um, three years after release, they were still sitting on shelves for 5 to $10 for the full kit. So you can see why Hasbro decided and I'm not going to continue making these and why there's never been another attempt in this range. Still, it was a worthy effort. At a time when LEGO was trying to be more action figure -y, these fit right on the shelves and were, at least if nothing else, a good idea.